Introduction and Disclaimer This video shows all devices in a non-production environment. The devices, in most cases, are off or are fully unplugged from any external power source in order to clearly show the removal and replacement procedures and other aspects of the devices. The instructions in this video are current as of September 2014. Please consult the product manuals for the latest updates and instructions. Before watching this video, you should have already watched the caveats, disclaimers, and warnings video for required information. Warning! If you perform this procedure with the power turned on, you must complete it within 15 minutes to prevent the possibility of overheating the equipment. Do not remove both RAID canisters from the primary storage shelf at the same time. One RAID canister must be functioning at all times. Note, if small form factor pluggable transceivers are present in the faulty RAID canister, you will need to remove them and move them into the new RAID canister when installed. To replace the RAID canister in a semantic primary storage shelf, first locate and identify the storage shelf that has the faulty RAID canister. If necessary, have the customer take you to the unit with the failed component. If the work order provides the appliance serial number, verify that the serial number on the work order matches the serial number on the appliance that the storage shelf is connected to. On the NetBackup 5330 primary storage shelf, the chassis number is located on a label on the front, lower right corner of the shelf. If the bezel is installed on the front of the primary storage shelf, you will have to remove it. The storage shelf bezels are secured with a keyed latch. You may have to ask the customer for the key in order to remove the bezel. If you remove the bezel, place it in a safe place out of the way while you work on the storage shelf. The RAID canisters for the primary storage shelf are located in the center of the rear panel of the shelf. These RAID canisters are located between the two power canisters. Locate the failed RAID canister by checking the amber service action required LED and the blue service action allowed LEDs located on the RAID canisters. If a fault is detected, the amber service action required LED is on. Before you can safely remove the primary storage shelf RAID canister, the blue service action allowed LED must be on. If the canister is not in the service allowed state, Contact your Semantic Technical Support representative and have them assist you in setting the RAID canister to the required service allowed state. Wait for the Blue Service Action Allowed LED to come on before performing any maintenance action on the canister. When the blue LED does illuminate, you are ready to continue. Before you start to replace a primary storage shelf RAID canister, gather anti-static protection and a replacement primary storage shelf RAID canister. Now unpack the new primary storage shelf RAID canister. Set the new primary storage shelf RAID canister on a flat, static-free surface near the old primary storage shelf RAID canister. Save all the packing materials so you can return the primary storage shelf RAID canister. Using temporary labels, label the fiber channel cables that connect the faulty RAID canister to the appliance. Also label the SAS cables, if present, that connect the faulty RAID canister to the expansion shelf so that you can reconnect each cable correctly after the new RAID canister is installed. Now disconnect all of the cables that are connected to the faulty RAID canister. If the storage shelf is running while you perform the RAID canister replacement, do not disturb the other RAID canister. One RAID canister must always remain running. Note the information displayed on the seven segment display of the faulty primary storage shelf RAID canister. The RAID canister should display a value of 99 when functioning correctly. Prepare the air blocker by removing it from its packaging and folding it inward at right angles so it is ready to insert into the open RAID canister slot. Each canister has two orange latches that disengage the canister from the chassis of the storage shelf. The orange latches of the replacement canister secure the new canister in place. Remove the faulty RAID canister using the orange latches. Unlock the release lever and pull the release lever outward to release the RAID canister. Using the release lever and your hands, pull the faulty RAID canister out of the primary storage shelf. Set the RAID canister on a flat, static-free surface. Insert the air blocker into the open RAID canister slot to make sure that correct airflow is maintained. 
remove the FC SFPs from the faulty RAID canister, taking note of where the SFPs are installed in the RAID canister. To remove the FC SFPs, first flip up the metal handle on the SFP. Now you can use the handle to pull the SFP straight out from the port. With the faulty RAID canister laying upside down on the work surface, press down on both of the blue top cover latch buttons and slide the top cover to the rear of the canister to remove the cover. Rotate the battery locking handle down to unlock the battery. Now remove the battery from the faulty RAID canister by sliding it towards the rear of the RAID canister. Locate the new RAID canister and remove the cover from the canister. Insert the battery into the new RAID canister by sliding the battery towards the front of the new RAID canister. Move the locking handle up to secure the new battery circuit board to the new RAID canister. Reinstall the cover on the new RAID canister by sliding the top cover forward until the top cover latch buttons click. If the customer did not order new fiber channel SFPs for the new RAID canister, locate and install the fiber channel SFPs that you removed from the faulty RAID canister back into the RAID canister. The SFPs should click into place when applying gentle pressure to fully seat each of the SFPs. If the customer ordered new fiber channel SFPs for the new RAID canister, remove them from their packing materials and install them in the new RAID canister. The temporary air baffle can be removed from the empty RAID canister slot. Slide the new RAID canister all the way into the empty RAID canister slot on the rear panel of the primary storage shelf. Push the release lever towards the center of the RAID canister to lock it into place. Reconnect all of the cables that were disconnected when you removed the faulty RAID canister. Remove the temporary labels as you connect each cable. The semantic support technician will bring the controller online if need be. Look at the LEDs on the RAID canister to make sure that it is rebooting correctly. The seven segment display shows the sequence OS, SD, and then blank to indicate that the controller is performing start of day processing. After the RAID canister successfully completes rebooting, the seven segment display shows the tray ID matching the seven segment display on the second RAID canister. Both canisters should be displaying a value of 99 when fully initialized. The initialization process can take up to five minutes to complete. Now look at the service action required LED on the RAID canister. If the RAID canister's service action required LED is on, check to ensure that the RAID canister and cables are installed correctly. Reinstall the RAID canister or cables if necessary. Install the bezel by locating the notch located in the middle of the storage shelf bezel with the metal tab on the left edge of the chassis that contains the front panel chassis LEDs. The tabs on the bezel should align with the notches on the left-hand side of the chassis as well. Now align the tabs on the right side of the bezel with the notches and insert the bezel, the right-hand tabs, into the notches. Press the bezel down firmly and evenly until the tabs snap into place. The bezel is new, so the plastic may need to be flexed slightly. Using a customer-supplied key, lock the bezel in place. Now that you have completed the replacement of the component, Contact the customer and confirm that they are satisfied with the repair. After completing the hardware replacement procedures, Symantec recommends that you do the following. Remove all boxes and shipping containers from the installation area. Recycle materials as much as possible. And return any equipment or tools as needed.